Alright guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the Oath of Eternal Night Paladin from Velda's Spire of Secrets. So this is not Batman. Definitely not. Got it. If you're new to the channel or the subclass series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass, then we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy, based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base class abilities. That's right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. I want to give you that free stuff. All that being said, Alex, let's jump straight into it. Okay. Oath of the... Not Batman. Got it. Eternal Night. Okay. As with all Paladin-based things, we have our tenants. Yes, of course. And it's, we we like the fact that they that paladins get this. What the kind of the, gives you a good theme of what the class can be based around. Instead of just being a paragraph description, there's actual rules for paladins, yes. which the DM can punish for not. Yes, which is again a or unique thing for the class. Consequences. consequences. Not always. Not always punishment. punishment. <laughs> Maybe changes the course of some actions. None are exempt. The good of the many and night of night. We also do get some paladin spells. We get Featherfall, Longstrider, Misty Step, Pass Without a Trace, Fly, okay, Haste, Dimension Door, Freedom of Movement, Passfall, and Teleportation Circle. So lots of movement uh, and, and utility as far as that goes. And then there's a five-letter word that starts with H in there that <laughs> I do not have to describe my love for that spell. Yeah, I'm not upset about that spell list. No, not even a little bit. Moving on to the channel divinity options at level three, we get two different ones. First is cover of darkness as a bonus action using channel divinity. You can create a 15 foot radius sphere of magical darkness centered on a point you can see within 30 feet of you. The sphere spreads around corners and lasts for one minute. You can see through darkness you create in this way. The other option is shrouded armor as an action using channel divinity. You can draw shadow stuff from plane of shadow and view it upon a suit of armor you are wearing. The armor is cloaked in a tenumbrous swirl and reflects no light. You can add your charisma modifier to dexterity stealth checks you make while wearing the armor, and the armor doesn't impose disadvantage on your stealth checks. This effect ends after 8 hours, or if you end the effect on your turn, no action required. The effect ends early if you remove your armor or fall unconscious. So, cloud of darkness, shadow armor. Yes. Very effective. Absolutely. Next up at level 7 is Slip Into Shadows. This is going to be your aura specific to your subclass. Mm -hmm. You and friendly creatures within 10 feet of you can take the hide action as a bonus action. At 18th level, this aura does increase out to a range of 30 feet. As with make some <laughs> almost all of the to pretend to be rogues. Yes. For, for close by. Also at 15, we have Cloak of Night. As a reaction, when you take damage, you can shed small flakes of darkness, which briefly whirl around you for, before disappearing. The next attack roll made against you before the start of your next turn has disadvantage. It does not specify like the same creature, so it doesn't right. only trigger like on a multi-attack based scenario. Like some Correct. subclasses have a way to get around. There's, if you get hit by somebody. Any other attack, well, the next attack, sorry, not all, not all. It, the next attack after that right. one is made against you with disadvantage before the start of your next turn. Thanks to our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Check out their big, bad bundles. Unique, cool monsters, history, lore, everything you need to throw these villains into your campaign. And it's a great way to get around your players that like to metagame or if they do it accidentally like I tend to do at times. Maybe they think they know what this monster is by the description. It creates some fun opportunities and unique things to throw at your even your most experienced players would not see coming. So check out the link in the description down below. Level 20, your final capstone ability, Shadow Form. Using your action, you undergo a transformation. For one hour, you gain the following benefits while you are within dim light or darkness. You have advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution checks. As a bonus action, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also within dim light or darkness. And once on each of your turns when you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you can deal an extra 3d6 necrotic damage to the target. Once you, finish, once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Whew, so... Pretty straightforward on here. Yep. We'll just jump straight into the rating portion. First up is the roleplay value, asterisk as always. We're talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initial order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. That's correct. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. Yes. So, all that being said, 
Uh, there is some interesting options with the spell list. Yes. Uh, you are a paladin, though, so you have to be careful with your roleplay spells on there because yep. you're going to be limited with your spell slots. Yes. But definitely have some options in mobility for use and yes. exploration, especially. And you'd rather have the options than not have the options. Exactly. <laughs> kind of thing, so. You definitely have some RP potential with uh, the channel divinity options. Both of Absolutely. them, with a stealth thing, can always come in handy. And, of course, magical darkness can always be effective trying to get away mm-hmm. from stuff cause distractions, whatever ideas you may have. Right. In many circumstances, it can be viable. You also have uh, the height as a bonus action, aura, which typically you would not think of that as an RP thing, but it definitely can come into play, especially in things like chases and yeah, stuff like that. Which chases kind of, kind of blur the line between combat and right. RP a little bit. So def- that's the first thing, obviously, I thought of was... So you're after somebody, and somebody you've, you've turned a corner. You can just gives you a chance to like just duck into an alley real quick, and right. maybe be harder to find than normal. And it allows the rest of your party, besides the rogues, of course, because they're their own breed. They don't care anyway. You can take a dash action and then bonus action hides. So you can dash like Alex just said, around a corner or something yeah. to get it further away and then cause some distance. So there is definitely some role play potential in there, but it is a little bit more on the niche side of things. Yeah. You're specifically dealing with stealth and being able to hide, and you're not really playing around with a lot of the other uh, other RP features, right? And then, of still. course, uh, with Paladins, as is standard for our rating system on here, we give a small little uh, inkling of RP for the tenant options just because it is actually built into the subclass and how it is played. Yep. So it is a little bit different than just standard you know, flavor text uh, for most classes or subclasses. Right. So all that being said, we just gave it a 3 out of 5 in the roleplay, some interesting options, good spell list, and some niche stuff here and there. On the combat side of things, things again, very interesting the way this plays. And I think there was a point when James and I were talking about this uh, ahead of time that the channel divinity option of the you know, cover, darkness, shroud, and armor combination in there uh, kind of gives you the ability to semi like soft haunt something. Where if they're if they're kind of stuck in there with you, they want to try to come get you. They can't may not be able to see through that magical darkness, but you can. So that you yep. can really kind of play around and mess around with some people and kind of, you know, give interesting little interactions with you and Melee that normal other paladins and martial classes don't have that kind of interaction where they can kind of be... You some utility, basically, yeah. that paladins wouldn't normally yes. get. Yes, and really extra survivability because you're going to be harder to see, therefore harder to hit, besides that. Obviously, the hide action as a bonus action is going to let you kind of duck in and out and be right. very, a very roguish paladin. Sure. Um... The Cloak of Night, again, helping your survivability. You know, if you get hit once on between turns, which if you're a martial class, there's a better chance of you being hit by stuff because you're going to be in somebody's melee range most of the time. It's the danger. It, it, it is the fray. Fray. This is why you have more armor class and, you know, and, and more typically health. Typically more health. Yeah. <laughs> it, typically more health uh, because, you know, you're going to be in there. And, of course, you're all giving you advantage on, you know, strength, dexterity, constitution checks. Normally only applies to role play, but they're, you know, technically if you wanted to, to a grapple check is definitely... Strength, strength-based check. I mean, I just go straight to you have haste, so uh, I, mean, I, I, I was <laughs> leaving that for the end. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, and then the fact that you can teleport, so you've got all kinds of extra movement to get around all over the place during your ult, and then an extra three d six necrotic damage, which is like that second tier of damage. You got it's it, pretty solid on our on, at least in my book. It's like force and psychic damage, and then like radiant necrotic damage, and then everything else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a simple way to look at it's it because the almost nothing resists force and psychic damage. Right. Like it's it's very specific pigeonhole things, yes. and the only thing that resists necrotic and radiant is like some very specific things. But there's just more of them, so yes. of, of those specific things. So again, very good damage reliably every turn, and, it, and this thing does last for an hour. Is the other thing. So if you were in combat, you trigger this. There's a good chance that of actual in game time, you may find another combat. Oh yeah. Within an hour of actual in time, where you don't you you didn't just use it for one little combat and that's it. You've still got it for some RP section comebacks for combat. And like Jameson said, you do get this spell called haste. Not that we don't know what that does or anything, <laughs> but the only the only drawback to having both fly and haste is they both take the same level spell slot. And they both take concentration, so you can't get both at the same time from yourself. Mm-hmm. But there are options there. Right. Uh, you've got. And you've got some extra, besides your capstone with Misty Step and Dimension Door, you've got some fun little movement that Paladins don't normally get, so you can really just get to somebody or get out of trouble if you really need yeah. to. Um, Mobility for martial classes is always welcome. Yes. Um, 
But a lot of great things to say, aside from the capstone and then like the spell of haste, you're not getting any extra damage output for yourself. You're you got you're getting more more mobility, a little bit more survivability. So it, it, you're not getting a ton on that because it's not playing with your smites at all or anything like that. Your aura is not helping your offense out at all. Score wise, went with a three and a half out of a possible five flumps because, like I said, you're more survivability, lots of mobility, and some other right. I- interesting like battlefield manipulation with your channel of entity and whatnot. But not much other help on your offensive side, with the exception of the buff of haste. Uh, right. And then your capstone. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is you do get some really good spells with in fly and haste. Just specifically, those are fantastic. Yes. But you are a paladin, so yes. you just keep that in mind. You're not going to use as many spites if you're using those. Right. So it's like you to me, I'm thinking like, okay, haste and then smites. Yeah. <laughs> Attack it and smite it. <laughs> right. So you get to be. It's a very limited resource to, to yes. deal with, and also we weren't. Super excited about the aura, I don't think. Just because yeah. the hide aura, I mean, yes, you can get advantage on your attacks, but the thing is you have to actually have something to hide in. Yeah, what if that know, was or an area to What if hide. that was dodge instead of hide? Because like yeah, you could be, be that'd be ridiculous. Dodge bonus action is woo, that is so or strong. May, maybe it gave you the dodge option once you hit eighteen. I don't know. It seems it seems really strong. <laughs> Well, we agree. It's, check. We agree. It's kind of underwhelming right. now. So it, it's very thematic, but it's, yes. it doesn't seem super effective. And also, like if something has to be within ten feet of you up until it increases, is eighteen such a long much, way away? You have to be pretty close to hide. So how big is this thing you're hiding behind, or area you're hiding in? It's like someone just like evil wizard throws fireball. Like they know you're there, over there. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, uh, it's probably gonna hit one of you. Right. So um, I don't know. And again, the, the other point. Yeah. One of us brought up was anytime we see a paladin aura, everything immediately gets compared to a certain oath of ancients paladin. Oh, it's just so good. So like, yeah. So you compare that as a choice to this, you're like, mm, mm. <laughs> but again, everything can't be oath of ancients paladin in terms of, of the aura. So of course. So yeah, definitely some interesting stuff on here, but just a little bit limited again. Yeah. So it, it, it's nice. Yeah. Very nice. How much synergy? Yes. Speaking of nice, your channel divinity options. Pretty solid. You have a, one that is much more on the roleplay side of things, which is going to be the shadow armor. Yes. I mean, you can stealth in combat, of course, especially if you're taking the hide bonus action. Yes. Of course. Um, but with that being said, you'd probably much rather have some battlefield utility with the uh, magical darkness. You can do a lot more with that. Yes. Uh, so that's probably going to be your go-to more often. And that. So it's good to have those two options, though. Uh, good spell list again, helping mobility for Marshall is huge. And mm. combat effectiveness, being able to get to stuff can be a big problem, especially for uh, melee strength based characters. Yep. Just because you are very limited on your ranged options. Yep. So being so able throw, to. Just, throwing javelins or spears is. Yeah, you're, yet. you're not having a whole lot of stuff to do yep. with that. And then, of course, the nice defensive reaction is, is alright. Uh, it does help in some circumstances yes. for sure. But. It, and and there is no limitation to it. It's not it's nothing it too crazy to overpower, but it is a passive. Right. There's no like you know X number of usage per day. Just takes your reaction right. to help keep yourself alive. Yeah, if if you need it, it's definitely nice to yep. have that option. Uh, the aura is is a little weird, but it can allow for some you know surprises, some advantage yeah. for allies, especially rogues are always looking for ways to get that. I mean, mm-hmm. they already have bonus action hide, but you know, magical darkness kind of can help them as well. Mm-hmm. So impromptu ambushes and stuff can come into play as well. Maybe. Like a combat is triggering, or you hear something, and then you're just like everybody hide, and everyone just bonus action hides, and yeah. then they can ready an attack. Like yeah. you can do stuff with that, which is, is cool that yeah. you wouldn't normally be it, able to do. It's definitely not one of those abilities where you go like, "What are you gonna do with that?" Yeah, it has uses. It's just you have to be they're, a little bit more creative. You with do. It. They, they're very specific uses that definitely apply in certain situations. And I think too, again, it's very difficult. I would say to make hide. I know a lot of people are really weird about hiding in combat. Yeah. Uh, just because it's like, I know something's over there. And it's like, yeah, you know they're there. But, I mean, it's the fact that you could peek out and shoot an arrow or something that when they're not expecting it to happen. It's not yeah. necessarily like you don't know where they are. It's like, you know they're in that area. But it's yeah. like, if you're attacking from up here or down here, it might change your... And, and that's why like, the whole concept of partial cover exists with armor right. classes. Because if you're hiding behind... A, even a partial like rock formation like clips the rock, so that's why partial cover you know things like that exist. Things can make a difference. For yeah. Sure. But all that being said, we just get it a three and a half out of five yes. in the synergy. It has some interesting options, but again, um, we don't feel that they're super impactful. I mean, the the biggest things is your spell list. 
probably. Yes, it's, it's really nice. As far as what it's giving options. you, it gives yeah. The sides that you know, channel of Entity is what paladins have along with clerics, and the rest of right. that's just going to be you're getting more things. It's more, really, more internal synergy within itself. Yes. Than how much it actually plays with the base paladin right. itself. Yeah. Which is so, still a really good base class. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> So that's going to be it for today, guys. Let us know your thoughts down below. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when our new videos are coming that's out. Right. Thanks again to our sponsors. Check them out. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.